All right. So the next news story we've got here, uh, Amazon's latest FBA fee is a blow for brands. Here's what you can do. Um, and essentially they're talking about the new low inventory fee, which isn't necessarily that new anymore, but it's they're starting to charge for it where they were given a grace period before. So uh, why don't we start with you, uh, Rachel? Let me know your your thoughts on this fee. And my initial thought, so they've been subsidizing sellers not being really tight with their inventory for a while. So when you ship something in to one of the replenishment centers and it gets split out, it gets put into little green totes <laughs> called transship totes, um, and it goes on a milk run. Don't ask me why they came up with milk. I don't remember why that was a thing. And they get transferred between the different FCs. So they take on a lot of the cost of spreading it throughout their network so that their last mile delivery is most efficient. And what they were finding was that a lot of sellers were assuming that they were good to go as long as they had, say, 10 days of cover. Great. And then they would ship stuff in and then it would arrive before the other one out. So I'm, I'm in stock, right? But what that ends up doing is to meet certain promise dates, to meet certain delivery times, Amazon has to pay more for shipping. And so they basically were like, how do we force the sellers into cooperating? That was the first thing. The second thing that I'm pretty confident it's, it's I, I disagree with my business partner on this. I'm pretty sure it's a method to try to get people to use AWD. And while I think that AWD is a pretty great program, um, they are, if that's really where they're going with it, it was pretty mean because there's a bunch of things that AWD didn't do when it launched. Um, and so if you're just a, regular seller doing expiration date and stuff, or like they just opened shoes like last week. Um, they don't have any oversize. So you're still stuck with all of these fees. There's no way out. They're, they're just dealing with it. And so the way that we've been approaching it for our clients is basically trying to have six to 12 weeks of cover at any given time. Because once you go beyond that, then now you're, now you're incurring other fees. <laughs> so uh, six to 12 weeks is it. And that can be pretty stressful for some folks who aren't used to that or who do long tail items. And so as much as possible, even putting long tail items into AWD, it's much cheaper. It's easier to, to manage um, than trying to use FBA. But it's um, it's been frustrating. And I would say that normally it seems like they were launching some big new fee, like once one of them a year, and then you'd have time to get used to it. This year they launched three big fees. And that's been pretty frustrating because it's it's fairly simple to change your client's process or your own process. I'm having to do the same thing with my own seller account for one fee. Then you, they're like, okay, so I just fixed that. Great. Done, dust it. I can move on. Get ready for Q4, whatever. And then they're like, oh, and also, <laughs> like, can you just do this other fee? Why are we now having to pay return fees too? Um, so it just, it just keeps stacking up. Um, and I understand why. I mean, they were subsidizing this for a while to make Amazon, you know, the number one player that it is. And so now that everyone's dependent on them, then they're like, great, now we can do profit for our shareholders. Um, so as understandable as that is, because that is their role as the giant corporation that they are, is to get profit for their shareholders. It's extremely annoying <laughs> as anyone on the seller side. Yeah, it's uh, I definitely get what they're trying to do 100% uh, with spreading product around, make sure they have enough inventory um, so it's not running out of stock, but probably more importantly, like you said, so that it's closer, they can spread it closer to customers and save on shipping and stuff like that. I think where the hard part comes in is they haven't really been transparent in how they're going to calculate those 28 days worth of stock. And are they going to figure in, you know, if you're on a listing with multiple sellers, How's that going to work? Because if you run out, the listing is still going, so why does it matter? Um, or if you do a promotion outside of Amazon and spike your sales, now all of a sudden do you have to maintain more inventory or get hit with a fee or Prime Day is coming? You know, how's that going to work? Calculating that in after Prime Day, Christmas, and seasonal products. I mean, it's you need a whole team of mathematicians to figure out proper restocking for seasonal products sometimes. So I think that's where a lot of people are upset with the kind of a lack of transparency on that. And it's funny that you say that actually my business partner is an economics major. He does all the math <laughs> because it, it really is that complicated. It is, for sure. Uh, what are you thinking, Kevin? 
Yeah. I mean, so some of it is like, I kind of understand Amazon's point of view that, you know, there's this logistical challenge. I've noticed every year there's some new thing, IPI score, IPI score goes up. You know, you can only send an X amount per unit, then per account, then, you know, they, they keep changing. It's, you know, cubic volume, it's, uh, it's units. It's they, they keep changing it. I, there is a little bit of a, they can only have so much in there. And everything for years has always been on not having too much. In. So they've been conditioning sellers for years. This is not your just, you know, send in a container with a year's worth of inventory and leave it there because, you know, they have long term storage fees and all these other fees, uh, utilization fees. <laughs> Um, all these fees, 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 but it's always been more on not having too much. Yeah. So now all of a sudden it kind of is like a, a shock to the system where it's like, we're going to charge you for not having enough. And to that point, I think where I think a lot of people have anxiety and I think the real test is going to be, what does January look like for a lot of people? Because they say like, oh, okay, we're going to look at both 28 days and 90 days to calculate whether or not. So as, as long as you're fine in one or the other, well, 90 days includes the last 28 days. So if the last 28 days included basically Black Friday to Christmas Eve, you know, that might be three, four X spike for a lot of people. And then generally November is a bit of a spike as well. So now all of a sudden your sales are going down in January for some of your giftable type products. And I sell a lot of giftable products, but I think it's, it's going to be very interesting for people to see what that actually looks like. Now I, I was happy to see that they got rid of it for products under 20 units a week. I sell a lot of long tail products. Now I have the benefit of, I have a warehouse. Not everybody has that benefit. So I do a lot of kind of tweaking and customizing. In fact, I see my uh, warehouse worker just come into or get something. Um, so she's, you know, prepping inventory to send in so I can react a little bit more than a lot of other sellers. But if your business model was, you know, import from China or India or wherever and send into Amazon and you were trying to just not have more than six months of inventory, your window that you're trying to shoot for has gotten a lot smaller. Yep. And, you know, it's it almost feels punitive. Um, if you are in that camp of where you're now getting the small or the low inventory fee. And then the part that I, I still am not hundred percent sure on is if they have delays checking it in, how much are they going to account for that? Yes. They, they had said that they were going to, you know, give you some credit for that. I don't remember exactly how they worded it, but like we've all had it happen where, you know, all of a sudden you've got a shipment that's just sitting there for a month. Or you're in fulfillment transfer status and it's taking forever and it's, you know, maybe available for sale, but nobody's buying because not nobody's buying, but your conversion rates down because if they're quoting three, four week delivery times. Yeah. So that's going to hurt you too. So like, I, I think there's a few things there that I think. Or with it's, you, something's going to take, take a while for us to settle. When you send a 500 pound pallet to Amazon with 900 units on it and they claim we sent nothing. So that kind yeah. of stuff happens all the time too. It's like, yeah, I sent you, I paid for a $500 pallet with nothing on it. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. <laughs> what do you think, Leslie? This is the biggest stacked deck against sellers of any fee ever. And number one is the visibility, like Kevin was just talking about. Because it's hard enough to fight, like, let's say where they're charging too much money for your pick and pack because they mismeasured the product. It's hard enough to fight that. How are you going to fight a fee where something sat on the loading dock and then it sat in transship? And it's what are you supposed to do? Like sit and literally refresh the page over and over again to see when they actually start receiving inventory? How are you going to prove what they actually did, how long it was in what status. And as Kevin said, they haven't told us the rules for any of that. So I don't see how you fight that. But the bigger theme to me is Amazon has probably spent hundreds of millions of dollars developing its logistics. It is probably the most sophisticated logistics company 
in the world in its own right. I know there's UPS and FedEx, but you got to think about how they're actually taking the order, fulfilling the order, and then having it land on your door, right? With all of the last mile and the wagon wheel or whatever they called it for getting it out in the places in the middle of nowhere. So y'all know Amazon runs out of stuff, right? Like they run out of things and it doesn't get here on time. They run out of stock frequently. So if they have this infrastructure that they've built and spent hundreds of millions of dollars on it, please tell me how I am supposed to figure out how to have enough, but not too much, because that's exactly what they're asking for. So for Peak, I'm launching a new product for Peak. I am guessing what, because it's seasonal, I am guessing what the demand is based on what research I can figure out. Amazon has better numbers on that than I do because they can see all the numbers for all the competing products and all the internal data on all their retail stuff. I'm I'm making an educated guess. So tell me how I'm supposed to order and send in just enough, but not too much if they cannot do it. It's definitely very frustrating for sure. So I mean, we'll have to see how it plays out, but this can cannot be weighing well on uh, with the fact that you know now they're under investigation from the the F, is it FCC, FTC, FTC. So yeah, they keep doing these little things that are like, okay, you got to have this much inventory, but not more than this. Your price has to be between this and this. And at what point do we reach the monopoly status? You know. I think they're actually hurting one of their own primary goals as well, because one of their top goals always has been selection on the platform. And when you are putting the squeeze on people who may have some, you know, oh, we don't make as much on this item. It's really hard for us to figure out what the sweet spot is on inventory. I'm just not going to sell that skew anymore. Um, Over time, that's a reality. That's something that could actually happen, at least from U.S. sellers and you're diminishing your selection. Uh, But you're right, you bring up a great point because part of the way that Amazon has been able to escape some of the regulatory criticism is by saying we don't control the third party sellers, that's the marketplace. They do their thing and we're just the platform. But if you, you, how many factors can you dictate before you can't make that claim anymore that you don't have any material control over those sellers? Absolutely, definitely an issue. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.